I'm rounding out a series of three videos on the various spontaneous nuclear decay processes. Uh, I've talked about alpha and beta in the first video. I talked about uh, positron emission and electron capture in the second video. And then in this third one, I want to talk a little bit about gamma emission and spontaneous fission. Now, I'm making the distinction here between spontaneous fission and non-spontaneous fission, like we see in large particle colliders where I'm actually forcing fission to happen because the spontaneous fission is a process that happens uh, spontaneously. So that means that I don't need to start it. It just is going to spontaneously occur in order to, again, get to a more stable configuration because that's really the, the name of the game for nuclear chemistry and nuclear processes. So both of these involve the emission of things. That's just sort of um, also a key feature to a lot of these nuclear type processes is what am I getting rid of in order to get to a better, more stable, lower energy configuration of my nucleus. So for gamma emission, it's kind of a weird one, um, and it tends to be a little on the rarer side. Um, it really depends on the materials. Um, I say rarer from the perspective of someone living here on Earth, um, which I imagine is most of the perspectives of the people that are watching this. Um, but um, it's really about a metastable nucleus, and so metastable means that it's kind of an excited state nucleus. Um, with a lifetime of at least a nanosecond. So if you have this excited state nucleus, which we've talked about excited state electrons before, so they're in the outermost shells. We said at the beginning when we introduced nuclear chemistry that we can think about nuclear um, particles, these nucleons, in the same way that we do electrons, that they do have kind of hierarchies, that there are energies that are associated with them. If we have an excited state for these particles, that lasts at least a billionth of a second, um, then we have what is called a metastable nucleus. And we symbolize this or notate this with a little m because of course we do, uh, because it means all of the things, little m. <laughs> it could be meters, um, it could be all the things, it could be the prefix milli. But um, in this context, it means a metastable nucleus. So um, the the actual reaction itself and showing the equation for it is a little bit uninteresting, I think, um, because it's really just going from a nucleus with an M on it to a nucleus that's the same thing, but it's at a lower energy, um, more stable configuration. And the only thing that's changed then is this gamma decay. So I have kind of a gamma emission here. And gamma light or gamma emission is an energy that has a wavelength on the order of um, 10 to the negative 12 meters. There's that M again. <laughs> this is not a metastable nucleus. It is a length. So here's my uh, wavelength. So, you know, smallish for gamma. It's at the higher end of our electromagnetic spectrum in terms of energy, of course. So um, gamma emission happens, and then now it's at a lower energy state. Eh, you know, it makes sense. I, I like to think of it as that the nucleus is just kind of uncomfortable. It says excited, but it's like excited nervous. And so we have this excited nervous nucleus, and it just wants to blow off some steam, and then it will be at a lower energy configuration. And the steam that it blows off is, is this kind of gamma emission. So let's look at an example. Let's take technetium. Let's do... Technetium 99M, which again, M for metastable, and this would be the context that you'd see it in here. Um, the M again associated with the, the mass number. And then uh, the only difference is it just becomes a non-metastable nucleus, which again, not the, not the most interesting in terms of symbols, um, but what is released then is our gamma particle, our gamma radiation. So um, the thing, the key thing to look for there is that that M there that indicates that there's kind of an un, a discomfort with this one. It's high energy. It's excited state. There's something weird there. It's lasting for at least a billionth of a second, and that's just long enough to make everyone uncomfortable until it can release that gamma particle, and then we're better, lower energy. Okay. So that's one way that um, that our nuclei can get to a more stable state is just by emitting some quick bursts of energy and then get into a more comfortable configuration. Um, in this case, technetium is still radioactive. It's still going to be emitting other things. But in the meantime, as things are rearranging, it can have these slightly metastable and then this gamma emission happens. Gamma emission is very dangerous. Gamma emission is the highest energy of our, our emission. Um, so if you are around that, then that's bad news bears. 
It's an understatement. Okay, let's talk about our sixth type of spontaneous decay, which is spontaneous fission. I'll talk in later videos about fission that happens through nuclear bombardment. That's a slightly separate thing because that's causing, that's a non-spontaneous process that is caused by something else. Now fission in general is splitting apart a large nucleus. into two. Now if this happens spontaneously, then the nucleus of the atom has decided that the only way it can get to a more stable configuration is to break into two smaller bits. So when I say a large nucleus, I'm talking about mass numbers that are greater than 89. So my mass number, again, is the number of nucleons, the number of particles. If I have a greater than 89 um, total, then that's a large, considered to be a large nucleus. Um, and then this is going to split into two smaller pieces. So let's kind of think about this conceptually first, and then we'll talk about it in terms of symbols. So if I have something like uranium-236, so here's my nucleus. Here's my uranium-236. Now we know it's uranium, so the uranium-236 has 236 uh, nucleons, so total number of uh, nuclear particles, and then 92 of those 236 are, um, are protons, because that's the atomic number. Now, if this uranium-236 decides it's going to do spontaneous fission, then it's going to split into two smaller pieces. And again, decides is not really the right word, because it's not like it's, you know making a rational decision about things, but um, from an energetic perspective, then yes, it sort of is. And let's say that this one now has 96 of those particles, and this one has 136 of those particles, and protons-wise, kind of those 92 split to where I have 39 in one, and I have 53 in another. So if I end up with 39 on one side of this, then that's going to give me the element yttrium, and then if I have 53 on the other, that'll give me iodine. Now, in an introductory level, which we're at here, if we're just kind of introducing you to these processes, these, you wouldn't be able to predict what these are unless you know a lot about uranium-236, in which case you're probably on a watch list somewhere. But uh, uranium-236 is going to split into these two decay processes. Products, they're going to um, each radioactive isotope is going to do slightly different products depending on kind of the way that it splits and sort of what makes the most sense. Um, so these aren't necessarily ones that you would know, but if you're given information about the numbers here, then you should be able to fill in the element. That's kind of the idea here. So it splits into these two. Now if you're kind of doing some savvy back of the envelope calculations here, <laughs> then you'll see that my protons add up. So 39 and 53 give me 92 but I'm missing a few of my neutrons, right? So if I look at my neutrons over here, I had 236 total particles. If I compare that to my mass numbers here, it looks like I'm short about four. So what happened? Well, those four neutrons ended up leaving because they're no longer needed anymore, right? The reason that neutrons are in the nucleus is to help to provide kind of a buffer for these protons in order to keep them separated because they're positively charged. So these, these particles in the nucleus that help to maintain the optimal distances between these protons and keep elements stable. So as we get smaller, we need fewer neutrons. And so if I spontaneously fission into two component pieces, then these neutrons have to go somewhere. So I have four neutrons that are just taken off. And now these neutrons can go and potentially, if they're fast flying, split other nuclei. So this process is spontaneous at the start, and then the products of this process will also cause um, non-spontaneous fission in other things, potentially, kind of depending on the environment, depending on how fast flying these are etc. So we have some neutrons that are just kind of bebopping around into the universe. So this is sort of the idea. This model, by the way, that shows fission in general, 
um, is a model that was proposed by Niels Bohr of the Bohr model fame of the atom, which we usually think about in terms of electrons, but he also was the one who thought about fission. It's called the liquid drop model because it kind of looks like a droplet that is splitting into two smaller droplets. So he had a model for everything, Niels Bohr, quite a genius. Okay, now if I'm thinking about this in terms of symbols, so here's my uranium-236. It is spontaneously fissioning into my two products here, which again have to be given to you, or at least parts of them have to be given to you so that you can intuit the rest or calculate the rest. So there's my yttrium, there's my iodine, Sorry that my three got a little wonky there at the end. And then I still have to account, because this is a balanced chemical process, I have to account for all of these neutrons that came out as well. So I have uh, the neutrons, so I have one, zero, right, for my neutron, number of nucleons, number of protons, and there's four of them. So I'm gonna put a four as a coefficient here of these neutrons. Now four times this, plus my 136, plus my 96, will give me the 236, which is what I'm looking for. And then the zero plus my 53 plus the 39, give me the 92 that I started with. So this is a process again, by which a uh, nucleus can become more stable by splitting itself into two pieces. And then we kind of lose some of the bits along the way. All right, as always, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Otherwise I will talk to you again soon.